How do we paint skin with cheap watercolors? The answer is the same thing that we learned so far with the same techniques. I'm used to painting with an A3 sized paper, mainly because objects look a lot smoother when you look at them from afar. But of course you can use any paper size you want. A3 size is much more expensive, so for beginners I highly recommend to use the A4 size since you're learning and practicing, so it's better to use a low budget material till you're confident enough. And of course don't forget to tape down your paper. It's for clean edges and it pins the paper back down after it buckles in each layer. Okay, back to the skin. This palette doesn't have a name for each color, so I'll just show you which color I used every time. As you can see, I'm not guessing which color would be right for me. I simply look at the swatches paper that we made in the previous lesson. And sometimes I even test the colors on a scrap paper just to make sure if each color suits the other one. Earlier, I started off with wet on wet. I dab a little bit of the skin color and started spreading and blending all the way to the edges of the skin. Then I took this color that reminds me a little bit of Indian red and apply the paint around the eyes and nose and quickly blend it around all the way to the edges. I'm also adding a bit of shadow on places like under his bangs and with feathering technique I'm applying shadow under his neck as well and blend it down. These first layers are mainly the base and later on we're gonna keep layering according to that base that we do now. The best part when you get to know different palettes from different companies, you also get to know the product itself. For example, I noticed that these colors specifically dry up faster than other palettes that I used. So I adapt my methods by painting quickly with this one. Make sure you decide which angle the light is directing to. So in my case, the light is on the left, but almost to the front of the face. Now that we've created a base, keep layering and building the shadows again and again. You know, when I first started painting, I always tend to move things above the painting. And let me tell you, there were so many times that my paintings accidentally got stained with water drops, with glue, with gold leaves that were flying around. Basically a mess and sometimes it was hard to fix it. So yeah, I was a bit clumsy at that time. Even on my first post on Instagram, there was a blue stain on the side, but I managed to crop it. Let me tell you, I didn't use the palette for painting yet, so this is the first painting that I do with this palette. Also, I almost never mention the lips, but usually I blend it with wet on dry, so it goes from dark to light. And of course, when it comes to arms, we blend it like reflected gradient, so there will be shadows on both sides, but the middle stays clean. I kept layering and I noticed that no matter how many layers I apply, the paint is too bright. So I'll continue to do a transparent wash of wet and dry, quickly apply it all over his face and let it dry. After it's dried, I do the same wash on his arm too, to make the skin color even. Then let it fully dry again. This can only work if you wait for the paper to dry completely, otherwise it would have created a bleeding effect, so I'm pretty confident to try wet on dry now. Next I apply a transparent wash again, but with white watercolor. I loaded the brush generously and applied quickly. So don't forget to apply the wash all over the face and arm too. When everything is dried up and looking good, I start to line out using a small brush. I line the features that I want to emphasize, including the shape of his face, eyelids and eyebrows. As for the eye color, I picked the color purple. Then I applied the base layer and continued to create a nice gradient from top to bottom.
And finally, we add small details for the final finish. My favorite part is adding white sparks on the eyes. And we're done.